The Journey to the Elites with KJ. Growing up on the water with fishing in their blood, Matt Airy and Brian Thrift have spent the last 10 years competing against the biggest names in professional bass fishing. Their success is landing them ranked among the top anglers in the world. If you're looking to become a better angler, then this show has all the answers. Join us and follow along to get actionable tips, tactics, and tried and true techniques directly from the pros. Welcome to Let's Talk Fish. All right, guys, we're back live in the studio, and we have a very special guest tonight. Last week, it was more of a comedy routine, I'd say, Jeff, more or less. I think so. I, I wasn't here for a lot of the show. Well, you, you were here because we summoned you. Actually, Fat Cat was screaming and throwing stuff at that doorway because we had an emergency. <laughs> I was at the other end of the building, and I heard him scream. Well, cause, so I yelled first. <laughs> and it's not a small building. That's right. I yelled first. Yeah, this is, what are we sitting in, a hundred and something square, thousand square foot building? Not this particular portion, but yes, total. Well, you were a hundred yards away, probably. Easy. Yeah, so I, I yelled to try to get everybody's attention because the screen went black. We had a, a, a malfunction, I guess I could say, over here. And the screen went black. The video went black. They everybody Drew's fault. To, 100% Drew Gregory's fault. Okay. Right. I, <laughs> I didn't want to say anything. Him out. Go call him out. I'm calling him out. <laughs> but it was Drew's fault. Um, all right, so we got about 125 viewers on tonight. Guys, we appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, again, very special guest tonight. Thrift is absent, but we've got a, I'd say, a better replacement. I mean, in my opinion, we got much better replacement. Sure. But uh, what, what do you think, Jeff? He's not watching. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> he's definitely not watching. He never watches unless he's actually here. So, And that's just because we make him. Um, but Mr. KJ Queen's here tonight. And his dad, Mr. Jeff Queen. Guys, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I want to talk about KJ's journey. And if you heard the topic of the show tonight, the title of the, the, the show tonight is, is Journey to the Elites with KJ. But what we didn't elaborate on is that KJ not only fished in the high school ranks, but he actually obtained one of those elusive fishing scholarships to go fish for Bethel University. And then from there, from there, he propelled himself into the Elite Series and qualified your very first year. Correct. Trying. So uh, we've talked about college fishing. We've talked about high school fishing. Brian and I are obviously jealous about not having that opportunity. I'm sure your dad is too. Very much. Um, but uh, did did you go? Did you go to college? I did. I okay. went to NC State. Oh, you went I'm to State. Wolf, I'm a wolf. My packer. man. My man. <laughs> I'm a wolf packer. <laughs> All right. I guess we'll excuse him. Yeah. At, at Bethel, just because <laughs> State doesn't offer fishing scholarships. That's and right. honestly, if they did that at the time. You or I might not have ended up at state because because I know you were, like myself were big time in the fishing. Absolutely. Um, but let's talk about uh, let's let's back all the way up to to high school and I want you to talk about a little uh, you know your path because we get questions all the time and I hope anybody that's watching the show tonight be sure to share this show to any of the young viewers out there any of the guys that their dream is to fish professionally because there's so many opportunities and this guy sitting right here is a perfect example on taking advantage of the opportunities and and creating a pathway and taking advantage of it and pursuing his dream and now he's fishing the 2021 Bassmaster Elite Series so talk about let's just talk about let's get into high school fishing first and I and I I'll direct questions towards KJ. Any of you young viewers got any questions for him, shoot them to our comments, and, I, and I'll shoot them over to KJ. But talk about where did you go to high school, um, and how was that experience? I went to Banny's High School, and uh, first year I started out doing high school fishing. Me and my sister, we teamed up together, and uh, we actually went on out. And we You and your sister? We, me and my sister, yes. Okay, now is she younger? She's three years older. Three she, years older. She actually okay. went to Bethel also on a fishing scholarship. Okay, But for right. so, so where it started, me and her, we fished together and fished the state tournament on uh, High Rock Lake, and uh, we ended up weighing in four fish for like 23 pounds that day. Four for 23? Four for 23. <laughs> that <laughs> sounds like a High Rock. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Four, four for 23. We had the fifth and on, but we never did get it in the boat oh, that did, day. Did you need it? No, no. Okay. no, we All went right. about like eight pounds, I think, or something crazy like that. But, you know, we started off there. That was our first tournament together. I got Hold on, I got to ask. How many did she catch? She caught two of them. She oh, caught two of the four. Okay. I give her credit. Okay. She held her own. She can hold her own. You said she was the queen of fish, and you were being serious. She yeah, actually she, is. She caught a seven and a half that day she, on High Rock. She did. Maybe we should have had her on. <laughs> 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 we probably should have. Been we'll, we'll have her. We'll have her had some looks at yeah. least. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I got them stuck with Jeff most of the time, so I, I need all I need all the help I can get. But um, all right, so continue. Sorry. So we started off there, and then we went to the uh, we fished at High Rock, and that kind of like gave us a little spark. And then we went from then and went on out and fished regional tournament on Lake Wiley. We ended up winning that tournament on Lake Wiley, 
which led us on into going to nationals to fish on Beaver Lake, and we ended up coming in seventh in the TBF on the uh, national championship at Wheeler or Beaver Lake. And, you know, that kind of like got us started, uh, you know, built a little spark, maybe, you know, started getting in the game a lot more. We actually fished the high school world finals two years in a row and finished third in them. And uh, whenever we were out there at the world finals, the first year we met Gary Mason. And Gary Mason was the head coach for Beth University, and, and he talked okay. to Chelsea, you know, Chelsea out there. And, uh, you know, he tried talking her into, you know, maybe coming and joining Bethel's team. I'll give you a scholarship. And she wasn't, you know, necessarily all the way into it. Well, the next following year when we finished third again, she was, you know, she was more fired up about it. And, you know, Gary was 100% dialed in on getting her on the team. Well, she was actually supposed to go to East Carolina University, and she ended up not going to East Carolina and transferred to Bethel University and ended up going out on a fishing scholarship. So she went out for two years and then fished for Bethel, and then I followed in her footsteps going along into high school fishing, me and Tyler Black. We fished our state championship, we won it, and went to regionals, and we won our regionals, and went to nationals, and we ended up winning our national championship. And it was on Grand Lake, Oklahoma. And, uh, you know, that was, that was awesome. That really kind of, you know, fired me up. It really set me off. Going into college fishing, I got a scholarship to Bethel University after that national championship. And, uh, you know, I was, I was super excited, uh, you know, a little nervous with the, the whole team platform where, you, you know, you're not really sure who you're getting teamed up with. But with Beth, the way it's set up, man, it was, it was incredible. So whenever you went there, you get the room with fishermen. So the whole how, how many how many team members at Bethel? Usually about around 30, 30 okay. team members. And are all these, uh, so is their whole team on scholarships? Yeah. Yes. Their correct. whole team is the whole on team is on scholarship. So you, you young fishermen out yeah. there, listen to this because this is this is this is opportunities, and they keep evolving. And we talked about they how do. many universities. You said roughly when you started, there was probably ten universities offering scholarships, yeah. but now there's correct. way more. And, they are. And from a parent standpoint, you're thinking uh, fishing scholarship. What's that like? Fifty bucks or something. My two kids alone got nearly $90,000 in scholarships. There you money. go. So I was going to ask that question, and <laughs> yeah. I didn't know if that was digging too deep. No, but I wanted to know, I mean, fishing scholarships, because that's always been a question in my mind. And, Jeff, yeah. you just answered it. Um, you know, how much is a fishing scholarship really worth? So ninety grand For my two combined. For yeah. your two combined, so basically forty five yeah. grand a piece. Yeah. Um, and that's for a fishing scholarship? I mean, could you ever imagine that? It's more than my we scholarship. Yep. Yeah, it's a lot more my scholarship. I can promise you. I was lucky just to yeah. get into and then, college. And then Bethel takes care of them. They pay all their entry fees, all their travel money, hotels, food, so gas, y'all have a budget gas money yeah. from the college. From yeah. the college. It so what, a, what does Bethel do for boats? Do they? They supply boats. They, they supply boats. the boats too. Yes. Yeah. You can use. Your, you can run your own boat, or you can use one of the school boats. Okay, so you have an option. You have an if option. you do, if you don't have access to a boat, they still got you taken care of. That's correct. And that's what's awesome because there's is. a lot of kids out there, um, you know, in yeah, college right. that, that don't have access to a boat. Um, very, very cool. So continue on once you got to Bethel, and because the, a lot, of, what a lot of people probably don't know is you don't necessarily pick your team partner, and, and with Bethel, it's 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 probably even more specific because you're you're coached. You, I guess I don't. Do y'all have qualifiers? Do you have? How do you? How does that? How does that work? Well, we Gary usually let us pick our own partners. Okay, he, so he, did. He, he would let us pick our partners, and uh, you know we'd go out and we'd have uh, little qualifying tournaments, but he never did want to put any competition inside of the team and try to break us up to try and make somebody better than another person. He would right. always make it a team sport, so we'd always be working together as a team. Well, that keeps that chemistry. Too, exactly, that exactly. Important. And, um, you know, he would also he would look at two different types of people. He would try and type a, find an A-type person and a B-type person. So you'd look for somebody that would necessarily have, like, stronger, uh, stronger strengths fishing deep water and take somebody that has stronger strengths fishing shallow water, put them two together, and then you have a you, know, you have a good combo. Yeah. So now, you know, I, did y'all have access as far as the team boats? Um, obviously, electronics have just exploded over the past three or four years. Did y'all have access to all the goodies? We did. We had uh, Ray Marine and Humberbird units. Okay. So, okay. so we we did it. have the graphs. So you had uh, y'all were running three sixties. I'm assuming. I uh, we well we didn't have the three sixties. Who slipped in a who slipped in a live scope or a live sight or something? <laughs> and I know somebody slipped them no. in on the boat. No, that didn't happen. Not, no no. Okay. Are you but running one this year? I am. I'm running one this year for sure. <laughs> yeah. right, that's a yeah. good. That's a good decision. That's a <laughs> yeah. good decision. I so I'm installing my active my Lawrence active target here this coming Friday. So I'm gonna be out on Norman next week playing around with it some uh, to get ready for the season. But yeah, it's just I mean electronics. It's a I'm, Lord Jeff's seen way more evolution in, in that side of yeah. things than I have. But um, 
Well, my first boat had a flasher on it, actually. Hey, I ran a flasher for years. <laughs> Do you still run a flasher? No, I don't okay. run a flasher anymore. I, think I wish I had one. Fritz may be the only person around that has them, but I, don't, I wish I had one. I don't know. I think he still I, – I wanted to look at his boat last year and say he might actually have gotten rid of it, but yeah. doubtful. He probably still has <laughs> I, I loved it because you could run 50, 60 right. miles down the lake. I mean – miles per hour down the lake and you could pick up shad and you're sitting there watching i'm doing 40 miles an hour 50 miles an hour reading my grass yeah it was super accurate at high speeds yeah at high speeds is it. awesome um all right so the, so the bethel deal i mean you fished let's see <laughs> i'm trying to think of some of the i know some of the guys that you fished with i don't know if you were there so, so cody huff you, you, were y'all on the team together correct yeah okay uh john garrett yep me and him were teammates Y'all were teammates. Yep, we were okay, teammates. That's scary. And you got John Garrett, who's fishing the Bass Opens now. He 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 actually almost won an Open this past year, if I'm not mistaken. Or would have won an Open. Would have won. Yeah. He had County. six fish. That's yet. right. That's yeah, right. Did a calling error. And, and I sent John a message on Instagram, actually, after that tournament and, and told him – I didn't know him from Adam, but I just told him to keep his head up that I think he handled it. Oh, I busted these shots. The right away. <laughs> well, I figured enough people were doing that. But see, I wanted to give him some positive encouragement. Yeah. Well, see, me and John and Cody and KJ all traveled together, room together, all oh, this year, last year in the at all the tournaments. Okay. So throughout the Opens. Got you. Got so you. So it was kind of cool. Well, LaHue, if you remember, you follow last year. I don't know if you yeah. remember LaHue did the same thing. And poor Shane, um, he was such a good sport about it. If you saw his post on Instagram after that, it was a little bitty baby in a diaper, <laughs> and it said, you remember this post, Jeff? Yeah. And it said, three plus two equals six. And the baby's, like, got a, like a kind of cock-eyed <laughs> look on his face. And uh, Shane was, I mean, he, like I said, he was, he was in the, kept a positive attitude about it, but yeah. um, it cost him a top ten at that tournament. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you yeah. know, obviously it was kind of weird the way things worked out. I don't know if y'all followed that tournament, but when Shane fell out, Buddy Gross got in. And Buddy yeah. won it the last Buddy day. Buddy ends up pound back. Sure enough. So uh, it was kind of kind of weird how it uh, how it turned out. But um, all right. So from Bethel, you decided to fish the open. Now, was that is this always been your dream to fish professionally? Is it, did it did it kind of come about later? Has you been that way since you were five years old? Or ever since I can remember, I've okay. been I've been raised up fishing tournaments. I mean, on first tournament I fished with my grandpa, we ended up winning. I was like seven years old. And then from then on, you know, I just got into it, and it's just kind of sparked and gained its ground over the years. And then, you know, now it's just, you know, competitive fishing is just something I've always dreamed of doing. So okay, it's definitely well, a dream. And this this man over here, Mr. Jeff Queen, has won his fair share of tournaments, and uh, especially on Lake Norman, just down the road here. Yep. I don't even want to count how many. I mean, you probably don't even know how many. No, I have no years, idea. But <laughs> he, uh, so when y'all were fishing team tournaments, I'm sure you've taken your – kids along on team events how did you decide between your daughter and sometimes it'd be, it'd be a fight it'd be a fight <laughs> it be. I, I could say since both of them were pretty hardcore and i've won tournaments with both of them <laughs> okay. uh, a lot of tournaments with both of them my daughter's won quite a few and me but and now they're old lot. enough to where that you can get another partner and they can yeah. fish together <laughs> that's yeah. right they actually fished together in college okay um, yeah. yeah so it was cool well that, that yeah that is awesome they actually I mean, hold a record that's pretty unique right actually uh, right well, um, KJ is sponsoring the giveaway tonight, a couple of his fine sponsors. And uh, you want to tell them, because tell them, that's, that's obviously half of your sponsors sitting right here at the that's table. Correct. Yes. And uh, you want to tell them what we're g giving away tonight. It's, oh, it's well over $100 in value. Um, this will be for the trivia question at the end of the show, which we've got a good one tonight. But, um, yeah, go ahead and tell them what all we're giving away, KJ. So what we're giving away, we're giving away two Jinko 6x5. Uh, a rigs. We're giving away one of the offspring uh, Jinko buzz baits, one of the CD sevens, which is one of the cool cold water crankbaits. Y'all want to check them out? A big wig hair jig, a uh, another CD two uh, square bill, and one of the uh, one ten plus uh, pursue jerk baits. Um, also, we're going to give away three point two five uh, booty shakers and a one ten flea bag. So check it out. That's well over well over $100 in Jinko products, and we're also giving away a bunch of Queen Tackle products as well as uh, Queen Tackle hammer shakes, uh, Queen Tackle flipping jigs. Talk about the hammer shake for a minute, that's right. pretty awesome. So, you know uh, about that? Cool about oh, yeah. Our, yeah. our hammer shakes is, uh, so this rattle. I just don't talk about it, but now he's going to talk about it. inside of the head of this uh, shaky head. So this shaky head is all tungsten. It has a 5-volt Mustad hook in it, and inside of that head, there's actually a rattle built inside of it, and I don't know if you can hear it on there or not, but, uh, man, just that extra little bit of rattle is just enough to trigger a few extra bites that you're needing to, you know. I mean, when, in fishing, ounces matter. So, I mean, if you just get one extra bite, it's all worth it. And, one uh, bite. 
Yeah, one by. That's and right, we're also by. giving away some Queen Tackle Switchblades as well as one of our newest product, which is the uh, Queen Tackle Peanut Jig, which is one of our new fin finesse jigs that we just come out with on I market. I haven't seen it. Where's that one? It's right here. It's, it's sweet Y'all may or may not get that one on the giveaway. <laughs> it's a, oh, okay. I like that. Yeah. Now, um, all tungsten, right? All Correct. the Queen stuff is all tungsten. Yes. Even the... Um, no, it's the Jinko. Rigs. This, this oh, Jinko. the Jinko's rig. Jinko okay, rig. And all, I know all this stuff is the Jinko stuff, right. too. Correct. So, well over $100 in the giveaway. Um, I did see a couple questions come through for you, KJ, earlier. One was talking about, and we were getting ready to kind of jump in from your, your college career to the Open. So, did you just make a, a, a decision that the second you were you had graduated, the second you were, you were done with uh, collegiate fishing, that you were going to pursue the elites? Or was that kind of just a, a spur of the moment type deal, or did you? You, you know, know, it was kind of you know planned, sought out. You know, I I helped me and Dad. He's helped me tremendous a lot building the Queen Tackle company, and you know the idea behind it was to build the company up to help support, and make, and you know go pro. And you know that be that was the whole game plan the whole time. So after college, you know, I was I was looking at fishing the opens, and we we're like, you know, I think I can afford it. Hopefully, work it out and. You know, went and did the opens and finally made it to the Elite Series. And, you know, that's all a dream come true, no doubt. Did you say finally? Did you say finally? <laughs> finally. You know how many guys out there watching me trying to do this yeah. for like 15 finally. years? Finally. After my first year. Finally, at 23 <laughs> years old, I made it. <laughs> no, I, I think, I mean, dude, it's, it's, it's obvious that you've got the talent and you deserve to be where you're at. And uh, your consistency over the years, which I didn't know about your success in high school until y'all just talked about it recently. And um, obviously, you've, you've, you've earned it. Uh, Jackson wanted to know. Speaking of consistency, you know, all the way through Bethel, um, all the way through the first year of the Opens, uh, what is your key to being a consistent angler? Not necessarily winning events or, or uh, um, you know, uh, doing really, really well in one tournament, but you were consistent all throughout your career the last four to – I'd say, well, more than four years. I was counting Bethel in the Opens, but – um, the last eight to ten years, you know, consistency was key for you. And most definitely. And honestly, uh, I tell you what it is for me. I feel like it was time on the water. Uh, you know, we we would go out there at Bethel University. We'd go get off class three o'clock, one o'clock, whenever. We we're headed to the lake. We we're going out fishing on the Tennessee River every single day. I think there was, you know, my freshman or sophomore year, there might have been ten days that we didn't go to the lake fishing. You know, throughout the both semesters. So I mean, you know, spending the time on the water, I think, you know, really helps a lot. You know, being not necessarily even in practice fishing, but just you know, going out fun fishing. Every, every time you're out there, you're learning. You know, you're you're That's you're right. figuring out how that bite feels, what what to look for. You know, this that another. And whenever you, we joined it with the uh, you know with the college, you'd go out and we'd spend at least like a week of practice before these tournaments. You know, and you being you know daylight to dark. It was never a you know, let's go out and fish for a few hours and then come back in, get lunch, and go back out. It's, you know, we get out there, we get out there at daylight, we're going to stay out here until it gets dark, and we're going to grind the whole time. And, you know, that dedication really really pays off. Yeah, we, we get that question all the time on the show about, um, you know, how to become a better angler or what can I do to catch more fish mm -hmm. or whatever it may be. And, and, it, and we always echo exactly what you just said. It's it's all about time on the water. I mean, yes, I mean, shows like Let's Talk Fish. I mean, yep. Bassmaster Magazine. All There's lots of resources out there that, Correct. that and <clears throat> there's a lot more now than there used to be. Right. I mean, everything, I was watching Bob Cobb on TNN, Bassmaster <laughs> Television, yes. and I was reading Bassmaster Magazine, and yep. the internet was non-existent for fishing information when I was young, yep. and uh, and I'm not that old, so don't y'all don't think I'm that old. But I'm, I'm, uh, I'm getting ready to turn 40 here pretty soon. Uh, <laughs> Jeff's, Jeff's like, how old are you, Jeff? 47, 40? You don't even remember. Y'all are young. 40, older, older than me, though. 44, young, I think. Boys. Am I 44? I don't know. You're older than me. Something like that. I'm 40-something. You and Drift are older than me. Yeah. And uh, so, but, yeah, it's kind of the same thing you just said. It, it, time on the water is, is priceless. And the more you learn on your own, the more confident you become. Definitely. You know, and no, that's perfect. I was very yeah. bad at a young age, and I, a lot of us are guilty of this, of, of relying on help. And leaning on people and getting information and, and blah blah blah, which obviously you're an elite angler now, and that's a, a thing yeah. in the past. Um, but you've you've proven that you obviously don't need it either. But you already you already you already got you've already unlocked the puzzle. And uh, and your dad obviously did a long time ago when he started kicking everybody's butt around here. <laughs> um, but that that is that is definitely time on the water and doing your own thing. I mean, keeping an open mind, not being afraid of change. Uh, is the number one key to success mm -hmm. in professional yes, fishing. Correct. Um, and, and fishing locally, too. I mean, that's, you know, there's a lot of guys, and there's a big difference in a one-day tournament and a four-day tournament. Big difference. And that's what a lot of guys, you know, guys always ask me, 
um, about the difference in, in, you know, there's a lot of guys here that we have a lot of really good fishermen yeah. in like a 90 mile radius yes, of right definitely. here. I mean, tons of really good fishermen. And that's why you go to Norman, and it's like you see a different winter every single week sometimes because yeah. Norman is just a unique lake in itself. But on top of that, there's that many good fishermen in the area. Right. Yeah. But going back to it being a one day tournament, if you stretch that out for four days, how often do you see Norman Saturday weights and Norman Sunday weights be oh, completely same. opposite? Yeah. Yep. I mean, the same fishermen running the same patterns, but it's not necessarily pattern fishing either. So they're right. whole fishing. They're fishing what happened yesterday. They're fishing the past. They're fishing what they found on Friday. And fishing the moment and spending time on the water is probably definitely, hands down, the, the best piece of advice I could ever give anybody. Correct. And you've unlocked that at a very young age. And I'm, I'm kind of jealous because I didn't figure it out until like five years ago. So, it, um, it's just a, such a game of probability. It is. Right. And, yep. and so it's... It starts with the time on the water, and then I think then you got to take all the little things and start just getting to to become the elite, right? You have to put every probability in your favor, from the tackle you use to the you know every bit of knowledge you can gain to the electronics to the you know who's your network, who are you who are you learning from? It, it just and it you can't ever stop that's that's the key as as well so i think it's time on the water gets you at base and then i think it's all those tiny things that swings probability your way yeah 100 percent. and you know probably talk about probability I, this is back dating back years ago to a, an interview that that thrift did it with somebody i hate to brag on him when he's not here i'd that's, rather yeah, pick that's, on that's, thrift. That's i don't like that's bragging hard. on thrift but <laughs> I, i'm gonna give him i'm gonna give him a shout out because he's like well you know my and, and here's the thing, before I say this, the decisions you make as an angler on the water, you've got to be efficient and you have to be versatile before you start making a bunch of random decisions. Okay, Correct. So if you make a decision and you're not efficient at that decision, whether it's picking up a jerk bait and switching to a top water and going shallow and going to deep, going to 10 foot, whatever it may be, if you're not proficient with all those different techniques and knowing how to apply it to that situation, it's pointless of making changing, changing decisions throughout the day. Okay, So thrift was... And he makes it sound so easy, but there's one <laughs> of the most versatile anglers in the world. Right. Um, it's all about, you know, he said, well, my, you know, I just go out there, and if I make more decisions than KJ in a day, the probability of me catching five good fish is a lot better than his. And I'm like, well, yeah, but it's, it's not as easy as it sounds. That's right. But it, it really is uh, to a point. Because sometimes yep. I think fishing is so simple, we make it hard. Correct. Right. You yeah. know? And, and we, think, we think too far into it. Um, but yeah, so I mean, Thrift's all about making as many decisions. But keep in mind that when Brian Thrift makes a decision to make a change, he is proficient in 60,000 different techniques, That's right. 47 different applications, 87 different situations, and he's seen it before because he yeah. spent so much time very on Very calculated decisions. That's right. They're very calculated decisions. That's right. Um, so it, it, it improves that probability and it creates a, a higher percentage opportunity, so to speak. Um, all right, got a bunch of questions. I, uh, oh, Ryan Loggins, uh, Rylan Loggins want to know how we give away the tackle. Our tackle giveaways, our trivia giveaways are always at the very end of the show. We'll ask a trivia question, the very first person to answer it correctly. Uh, that comes across our feed. And Unless Jeff Fat Cat's here, then it's the first 17 people. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a cluster, but um, we still love you, Fat Cat. But, yeah, at the end of the show, stay tuned. At the end of the show, we'll, we'll have a big giveaway um, that we talked about earlier. But, yeah, it'll be based on whoever answers our trivia question right uh, first. Um, all right. Queen Tackle makes a great product. You're getting a lot of shout outs, shout outs on the Hey, Queen I appreciate Tackle. that. They wanted to know who designed the hammerhead. Oh, what was the Queen Tackle jig head called again? Uh, let them know what that was called all, again. Queen uh, Tackle hammerhead or the hammer shake. The hammer shake. Hammer shake the is the shaky shake. head. And the hammer head is actually a jig, football jig with a rattle inside of the head also. Right. So who thought, there's another question, who thought of the, whose design was the hammerhead jig? So, so a lot of our products that we have, it's, it's interesting. I would get the Bethel guys all together, and we would start. You cheated. I did. <laughs> I did. Those guys come from all over the country. So You, you all could, made that like a class, didn't you? Yeah. Like design a new product you, you, you for go clean in, tackle. Uh, you go into go. their suite up there. There's four different rooms that feeds one suite. All of them are bass guys in it. You walk in, there's tackle everywhere. It's just like a dorm room, right? Tackle everywhere, a big screen TV, playing some bass masters from – 20 years ago, they're all sitting out there shooting the breeze, and you say, hey, I'm, I'm designing a jig, what would be the best way to have it? And they're like, 
Well, dang, I like a rattle in mine, and I like a big hook, and I want it wire tied, and I want this many strands, and I want this color. And you say, okay, and you're sitting there writing all of this down, and you go back and you think, okay, how do you design all that in? And so uh, I'm an engineer from state, so I, okay. I help design a lot of that. Uh, you know, how, how would a rattle work in a head? You know, if it's a lead head, it's going to be, you know, way too big. So right. it has to be tungsten, right. be cutting, cutting channels in it. Uh, we actually use uh, tungsten beads on the inside so that even just a small movement, there's enough. So that's extra a tungsten clip. bead on the it's inside. It's a tungsten correct. bead yeah, inside I, a I tungsten head. It has to be. If we, we put all kinds of glass and other things, it just didn't work. And it wouldn't work. And uh, these actually, we, we went underwater, listened to crayfish as they click underwater, and tried to mimic that as close as we can. And we've actually tested this so it. As we move it underwater, it clicks like a So when you fish. were testing that hammerhead jig, I'm curious now, because uh, I was assuming there was some type of glass rattle in there, but it's actually a tungsten. It has to be BB. tungsten. We don't, get enough, uh, we don't get enough click with the glass. Is it a BB, or is it like a cylinder-shaped tungsten? It's, it's, it's a, a BB. BB. It's a BB. It's okay. a BB on each side of the head. There's very two BBs, there's two there's two BBs, BBs in, in it. Okay, very Tine, Very tiny ones, yeah. Um, all right, so... Well, yeah. See, you talk about you never stop learning, and I learn something every time I'm on the show. I learn something every time I'm on the water. Doesn't matter if we're 80 years old or 20 years old, and it might be a new knot to tie or something. Like yeah. you can learn yeah. something from every single person out there that fishes, and it might not be it might not be the most um, the coolest thing you've ever learned, the most exciting thing you've ever learned. It might not help you that much, but the more you can put in that melting pot that Jeff was talking yeah. about a minute ago, the better off you are um, of increasing your probability. Uh, all right, so. They, there's a question on here. I know you boys, your whole family for that matter, has uh, a pretty strong reputation um, with uh, uh, bed fishing and fishing shallow water in the spring. <laughs> and uh, I want to know personally, I, I mean, I love to sight fish. And I, I've, uh, uh, that's one of my favorite times of year to throw a big swim bait and follow it up with some follow-up baits. But um, they, this is from Jackson. He said he wants to know how you and uh, how Jeff and KJ uh, break down bed fishing and seem to excel so well in shallow water tournaments. Either one of you. They don't want to tell their secret. <laughs> <laughs> this is Let's well, Talk Fish. We let it yeah, all Yeah, so out there is no secrets on the show. Yeah, we forgot it. Right. Thrift's tried to hold back before, but we may, we eventually get it out of him too. If, so. if there's one thing that I had to say that it helps you excel in a bed fishing tournament, it's kind of where I come back to earlier what I said with time on the water. I think, you know, no doubt you're going out and you put the time in for your bed fishing tournament or, you know, shallow water fishing. You go and you're, you're use, use your, using your eyes the entire time to look and practice, not necessarily as casting. You know, there's no sense in catching one in practice. You might as well catch it in the tournament. So it's necessarily, you know. It's so hard for some people to, to not and, adhere to what he just said. It is. But do not, I repeat, do not. If you can stand it, catch those spawners in practice. Yep, correct. And then yeah. you go back out, and then you're spending all that time by looking, you, you increase your odds of putting your percentage up there. So the more fish you find on bed, the better off you are in your, in your tournament. So, I mean, that's, that's the way my, my aspect of looking at it would be. And, and when you think you've found enough, you you've keep looking. Yep. 100%. St. Well, St. Lawrence is a perfect example yeah, when definitely. he was in his college term. So, so when I was at St. Lawrence, me and my, my partner, we went out. Is that out. the one where – I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just wanted – is that the one where 70 teams weighed in 20 pounds? Correct. It's, okay. it's 82. 85. 80, I'm sorry, 80, 80, 80 teams. Yeah. 80 teams in this event that KJ and, and Jeff are referring to. 80 college teams, team t teams weighed in over 20 pounds yep. the first day of this tournament. On the first day. On the first at St. Lawrence day. River. And this was last year or year before last? 2019. 2019. Two years okay. ago. Yeah. All right. I had to tell everybody that because that's yeah. Pretty, yeah. It pretty is. It was in, pretty impressive. In, in, it was crazy. And what happened was we were narrowed down to a 15 mile section of the river. There were y'all in the Waddington pool? Waddington. Yes. Just the Waddington. Pool. Only yeah. Waddington. Only Waddington yeah. because the water was high, so we couldn't get out and lock through through the dams. So gotcha. before that tournament, I went out there and you know I dedicated my entire practice where we we I, you know. I didn't want to stick my fish, so I never even put, picked up a rod hardly the entire time. And I looked for fish. I ended up marking 233 fish on bed before 233. that 233. 233 fish. Correct. And I got, I got the notes in my phone. You can go back and look at them. But they're all over like three and a half pounds plus. They're all solid fish. Did you just weigh them or did, were you just guesstimating? No, I just guesstimated okay. them. So, right. yeah. and, and actually, it turns out I didn't really know about catching them and, and guessing them or looking at them. But I've always been 
very weary of sticking a fish on the bed before a tournament. You know, I've right. always been yeah. against that. You know, I don't want to stick him in practice if I, that's the last thing I want to possibly do. You know, unless he's like maybe spawning or something of that nature, the keeper, you know, holding on the bed. But, um, you know, I, I went out and marked 233, and then the next day I, I was down to probably like 30 or 40 fish after that first day of the tournament because of how aggressive the fish were on the bed. And, uh, but I feel like, you know, just because I went out and found so many fish, it paid off. I had close to 22 a day and ended up making a good finish and actually ended up winning the uh, team of the year did at you, that tournament. Did you have to utilize all 233 fish? I, I went I'm through sure, the I'm sure, I'm sure some weren't accounted for, whether they got called or yeah, they moved yeah. or whatever, but um, did you pretty much run all your beds? I, I run all of them. And that was how many days? That was, that was two days. Two days. He ran 233 beds that he had marked. Some didn't have fish. Some were caught by other anglers. But that's what it took for him to do good in that tournament. And you had a what? What finish? Uh, right at, like, top 20 finish. Right. And that's – I mean, I had 22 a day, and I still finished. I mean, that just shows you the weights. Yeah, yeah. You know, the quality uh, of the that's fish St. Louis. St. Lawrence is insane. But that anchored his team of the year. <laughs> yeah, Bass correct. Masters, college okay. team of the year. I ended up winning the 2019 uh, Bass Master Angler of the Year – or team of the year, and that was the tournament that did it for me. Now was, was who was your partner in that? Dax event? Ewert. Okay. Yep. Okay. Got you. Well, so I hope y'all heard that because that's a pretty amazing stat, and um, I knew y'all were up there just absolutely hammering them. It I was, was awesome. I was jealous because I've <laughs> yeah. caught I've caught enough smallmouth off the bed to know that it's not like our largemouth around here. Like, <laughs> oh, no. You yeah. see one, you're going to catch him. I mean, that's yeah. just all, yeah. or at least you're going to hook him. But uh, yeah. that's pretty much all there is to it. But um, so 233 fish, two days. You ran every single waypoint, had a top 20 finish. And you had, a, but the key is he had to utilize every single waypoint that he had. Correct. Um, that doesn't mean he caught 233 fish off the beds. That just means that he, that's how many he had to have to have a strong tournament. Um, all right. So I had a, two questions in here already about your sponsor lineup for this year. So you want to talk? We talked about that before the show. You want to talk about who who's the title sponsor on the boat? And you told me what brand boat are you running? Nitro. Running a nitro. Nitro is one of my sponsors. Uh, Queen Tackle is my main title sponsor. Uh, Jinko is one of my co-sponsors. Okay. I'm actually doing a really cool thing with Burke Mortuaries, and they're actually representing my grandpa on my boat because he actually passed away right before Christmas this year. And, uh, you know, throughout the, all the years in fishing, you know, I've learned so much from my grandpa and my dad being out on the water. So they actually did really something really cool with me and made up a logo for him in memory of my grandpa on oh, my that's boat. Awesome. So that's, that's, that's awesome. really cool. Now, will you be sporting that on your jersey too? Or yes, mainly? correct. Okay, It'll be cool, on my jersey man. and that's on my really boat. Cool. And uh, so in Jinko. And uh, Buck and Bass it was one of the rain suits I'll yep. be running this year. It's phenomenal rain suit. It's incredible. I'm I'm looking forward to running it. Definitely not going to get wet this year. And uh, you know, uh, Allison White Realty Properties and okay. uh, and you know that's that's pretty much it as of right now. But, okay. Well, cool. Well, you got a good start. And uh, you know, obviously moving forward. Um, fishing professionally, the business side of the industry. The good thing is you have, you already have a college degree. You've got, you've got that background. And, and I tell, I tell guys that that's, that's very yes. important because whether you, whether you centered that degree around marketing or fishing or whatever it may be, it still gives you a lot more uh, of just that social experience to where you, you relate better to people. You're, you're, you, you, you're naturally more apt to just open up to somebody yes. you know it, it just opens up a lot of different avenues that people don't realize and they take for granted um, but that college experience is really priceless if you're going to pursue a career in, it in is. professional angling um all right well very cool well, you got a you got a good start with the sponsorship lineup too and um all right let's see uh let's keep on okay uh, ryan bowman said i can't get past the mental issue that i feel everybody else has found the bed fish that i have found also so I want, I want Jeff, because Jeff, you've, you've, you've fished in a lot of uh, sight fishing events over the years, and um, I want you to touch on that because we've all experienced that, right? We've all yep. found a giant in practice. We've all found a bunch of big ones, and like, oh, man, I got 25 pounds, but, it, you know, you, you, your, your brain starts playing, your mind starts playing tricks on you. You're like, I don't know if KJ found them. I don't know if Jeff found them, you know, and, and I don't know which one to start on and all that. But tell me your approach. I'm curious to hear it, and then I'll tell you kind of how I approach that too. Yeah, so um, if, if I've got a real big one, that, I'm going to that one first, right? I want, I want to see if it's there first. Um, Regardless of where it is or how it's acting? Well, that's, that's, yeah, that's a good point, right? So when I, whenever I think of a fish, I think when I look at it on the bed, I know it instantly. I try, if I got a big one, I'm going to look at it an hour before 
dark the day right. before, right? right. The, the closest window you can. Closest legally, window too. I can look at it, still see that fish. I want it to be setting up right, um, meaning that uh, I, I can come back the next day and I feel like it's in a position that I can catch that fish. Um, once, you know, I'm going to go to it first and um, I, I got a question for to you too, it. and I, I, yeah. I want you to, to continue exactly where you left off, but when you're looking at that fish the day before in that last hour of daylight or whatever it is, yeah. do you mess with that fish much? No. You I don't know. mess with it at all? I don't mess with it You just look at its positioning and... I do. Okay. I, I don't want to see it over there. If I see it over there and it's starting to you know, the buck starting to hit it or something, I won't even come back to it the next day. I know gotcha. she's going to be gone. That big one's going to... She may still be there. I may come back late in the day if I need a, a big one, but I, I know that she's going through that spawning ritual. I don't want to mess with her. She's not... The odds of her biting is really low once she starts Y'all better that. be listening to this. Yeah, once she starts that spawn and that, that odds of catching her, it's drastically reduced. Right. I, I really like it if the buck is holding real tight and the female is just right off the edge of the bed. If, if that in that female, juicy spot. Oh, yeah. yeah. People that's, think the juicy spot's in the center of the bed. No. no. But that's not necessarily the no, juicy spot. No, that's not the is, juicy is spot. And so, We're not going to elaborate on that too terribly. No, <laughs> let's, let's not go into a lot of detail there. <laughs> but, uh, but I also, in, in practice, you know, I, I'm going to look in places where nobody else is going to look. I might be on a main channel bank that looks absolutely awful. Uh, I'm, and, and a lot of times I can find, I won't find as many as I would if I went to the back of a pocket somewhere, but I know everybody's checking in the back of that pocket. So the, the odds of me getting that fish is low. So I'm going to be checking out toward the point. I'm going to be looking at maybe logs on the main channel. I'm going to be looking at, you know, one stump that I happen to, you know, know where it's at and, um, and so, so I'm looking at all those places, and I may not have uh, but 10 marked in those places, but that's eight or 10 of those are probably going to be over the next day. Fish. They're a high percentage fish, and I can get, uh, you know, I know when I come back to that fish, even if I'm going to wait till 10 or 11 o'clock in the day, I, I think where most people spin out, they pull up to that first big one. And they're, they're in the back of their mind, they're going, man, I got, I got five more. I got five more I got to go to. And, and they don't give that fish time to settle in and get <laughs> yep. ready. And so next thing you know, they're, they're leaving. I've, I've watched other anglers and watched them pull off of a big fish and be like, okay, that's me now. Yep. Go right in behind them, set. And you got to be patient. It's a patience. That's, yeah, bad fishing thing. is definitely a that, patient sport. Yeah, that, the one thing that I was going to say, I mean, I, you know, I can, you're, right, you're right on uh, – Right on cue with pretty much everything that I, I believe in and, and the yeah. way I go about it. Um, and, but one, yeah, that's that's I was going to add to it was patience. You know, guys get spun out yeah. so easily in a bed fishing mm -hmm. tournament. And I used to be that way years ago, and and now it, it's just a matter. And here's the other thing. You know, I go to I go to these events now, and and I want to find out what state like what stage of the spawn are we in because that's a big deal for a it multiple is, day yeah. tournament. You know, you, uh, in multiple day tournaments, the key is staying ahead of the fish, not getting behind them, right. not fishing because you can come out swinging the first day and look all great on the stage with a 25 pound bag you caught off right. the bed. And the next day, you're going to come in with seven pounds of bucks yeah. if you keep that's at right. it. That's um, right. And then you're going to get your teeth kicked in by these guys. Yeah. That's yep. just a fact. It does. Um, yep. So the biggest thing that I look at is uh, I don't necessarily get tunnel vision on the fish that I find in practice. I get more tried, I get tr tried more dialed in on an area that I feel like mm -hmm. is more in the middle or the peak of the spawn because you know like Norman for instance it's got two hot holes which is not like it's pretty unique in itself yeah, right but lakes all over the country are like that to where different parts of the lake are, are at on. different stages of the spawn yeah. and if, if that's your strength and that's what you want to do um, you can stretch it out and, and and you can stretch it out without getting hung up on just the fish that you find in practice you just keep an open mind keep a good search bait in your hand and cover a lot of water during the tournament and stay patient don't get yeah. spun out um, I don't care how many people have found them. It's like Jeff just said, they don't necessarily have the patience to fish for them, number one, and they lose confidence really quickly, or they hit the panic button too early, yeah. and they abandon ship, and they go do something else. And sometimes that works for them, but more often than not, if you're spun out, it doesn't work. Yeah, that's exactly you know, right. It has a bad result. Um, how much time, good question, Daniel Jones, how much time, we'll shoot this one over to KJ. I feel like y'all are going to be yeah. pretty similar in your yeah, answers. He will be. Uh, how much time do you devote to a fish before you decide to move on and come back later? Do you have mm. a set time? Or you, I mean, you're obviously watching the fish's actions, but um, how long do you give it before you decide catchable or not catchable? Honestly, it's all in the fish's actions, I believe. I mean, honestly, you could look at a fish and 
you just know if he, I mean, I don't know if you can necessarily know if he's going to bite or not, but you can tell by the way the fish is re relating to the bed, how it's reacting to your bait, whether or not you need to spend five minutes on him and go ahead and leave and go on somewhere, or if you need to go ahead and spend, you know, an hour or two hours on a fish. Okay. And I've spent upwards of two hours on a fish trying to get, you know, trying to get it to bite and finally get it to bite. And I know that I got a big one in the box. Now I got, you know, one of the five fish I'm weighing in at the end of the day. So, so I heard Alton Jones one time, this was years ago, and it's actually an FLW tour event on Beaver Lake. And right. his rule of thumb was five minutes. He said, I will make a decision within five minutes if I can catch him or not. And it doesn't matter if it takes him three hours. That's right. But if that fish is worth yeah. it, he's going to make that decision within yeah. the first yep. five minutes. And I'd say Correct. that's pretty that's, realistic. That's yes, true. I, yeah, 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 yeah. definitely. Um, five minutes is, a, is, is a, you know, we don't think that's very long, but that's, pretty good, that's a pretty good time to, to evaluate a fish's position on the bed, evaluate yep. the way he's going to react. Um, I mean, I've seen fish that – I have seen fish that were locked, and it took a – I mean, <laughs> they'd bite every other cast, and they still just would never actually eat the bait. Like, they would grab every part of the bait you could, you could throw. I yeah. mean, I've, I've, I've used – I have bitten off – the tail end of a methylate trick worm before and put it on a drop shot. Now, this ain't no lie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've done I some crazy, it. stupid stuff bed fishing to try to get, and they still just go. Yeah. Blow it. Yep. Yeah. And they blow it out. Right. And uh, you're like, well, he's so excited. He's so aggressive. He's so pissed off. I'm going to catch him. Yeah. And then you end up spending an hour and you don't catch him. But he, get, he, get, he shows you every sign that he's catchable. Right. And then you end up, or you hook him and you lose him or something, or you hook him right outside the mouth yeah. or something crazy happens. But um, so, so I have a question for you on the sight fishing. Mm -hmm. You pull up, there's a six pound female, a three pound buck. Do you try to catch the buck or do you let it like try to not catch it? So I've had, um, I'll actually have a couple different baits tied on for that particular reason. I will use certain baits to irritate the buck to see how the female reacts first to see if she wants to run in there and take it. But that's why I designed the Lunker Hunt Fetch, so I don't have to play that game anymore. No, in, 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 in reality, I have yeah. caught a ton of those suspended females on that fetch, yep. but I have actually caught some off the bed. I've caught some on the bed. Yep. I have caught the bucks before and had the female slide in there and caught them real fast. I've caught the bucks before and had the female abandon ship. I have too. So, you know, it's it kind of goes back to, to, to what y'all talked about earlier with every situation seems to be a little bit different. But I will actually intentionally not catch the buck if I can help it. I've got big jigs with rolled in hooks and all kinds of things to really get the buck fired up to where I can start getting the female to move in tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. You know and, all the tricks. Well, <laughs> and then, but, but, then, but then at the same time, She'll move in tighter, and sometimes she'll run. You know how it is. Yep. Sometimes they'll just they'll blast in. I mean, you might not even see a female yeah. sometimes. And all right. of a sudden, you're like, oh, there's a seven. Where'd she come from? You know? come from? And she just blasts in out of six foot of water and, and takes your bait. But if I know she's there and I know she's watching, yeah. I want to see if I can get her to creep. If I can't get her to creep, then sometimes you catch her off the bed, too. I mean, I've thrown... <laughs> I, I don't want. I, I don't want to talk too many tricks here, but y'all know all the tricks. Not yeah. everybody. Knows yeah, let's not talk but. all the I've tricks. I've taken I, back in the day. I was just wondering if you tried to catch the buck or not. <laughs> this That's goes. Just, this goes back to uh, as as a last result, and then it goes back to how much will it help my bag. And is yeah, it a four-day tournament? Three. And how much do I, I mean? When you're talking Bass Elite Series or a one-day event at Lake Norman, you know, big difference. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, AOI points are important. Classic, but you know, you get to thinking, and and it. So there again, it goes back to calculated decisions, yeah. um, making sure it's 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 going to be uh, the most bang for your buck. <laughs> no pun intended, but uh, but anyway, Jeff, shut up. Jeff. That was good. Come on, man, that was good, dude. That was good. I'll get on camera just so I can shake my head. <laughs> that was good. Um, all right, so another good question uh, from Daniel Jones. We need your number one. I'll let y'all start. Number one bed bait. Start down there with Jeff, and then go over to KJ. Number one bed fishing bait, and we all probably use a bunch of different things, yeah. but. Your number one, something that's caught you more bed fish than anything else over the years. I typically am going to use uh, some type of worm like a biz bait dizzy diamond that stands up, and I'm going to put it on a hammer shake. Okay. Uh, like a three eight. I want a three eighths ounce, five eighths a little bit heavy. I want like a three eighths ounce. Uh, a lot of people think you want to use something that's you know real tiny, real small. I don't. I'd prefer to use a a, a good sized worm and a heavy. Um, shaky head and tell them why you want the heavier weight because this is important yeah so so 
the hammer shakes actually, the reason we designed it was you, you throw it in there, typically they're gonna have sand or shells. And so I like that tungsten head, it's, it's, it's hitting it. And I can sit there and just barely, barely wiggle that. It's gonna, it, it's gonna make a tiny click noise. And I've just, I've seen it work too many times. It, it's my number one go-to. And correct me if I'm wrong, but using the heavier head, you want it to stay stationary as close to that little sweet yeah, spot. Yeah, I, I never want it to move. I want it to right. just rock. I want it to rock if I can. <laughs> All right, KJ? Mine's the same thing. I knew I'm, you were going to say that. I'm going to go with a handshake. I mean, it's, it's too good. But okay, now, your, second, I, your second favorite. Second favorite? I would like our, uh, our tungsten, like, three-sixteenths or quarter-ounce shake in and put, like, a zoom trick worm or a, okay. or a, you know, a Z-crawl, cutter-crawl, or something of that nature on it as well. So, but I like that tungsten shaky head. I do. That's one of the key things. I like having that tungsten on the head of my hook so whenever I barely move that bait, that tungsten is sitting there clicking the entire time on rock, sand, shell, et cetera. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, that, that those are both great tips. So, question for y'all: um, You both talked about using a uh, the biz baits worm. How long is it? Uh, six right. and five, eight. five inches. Okay, yeah. so pr six. pretty long. And, and you said a zoom trick worm. Yeah. So pretty pretty big worms. Um, that fish gets more irritated, keeps grabbing, blowing, whatever it's doing to that worm. Were y'all downsize after that? Not I mean, ne not necessarily. We go big. A okay. Lot of time. You just keep on going until he takes it. Yeah, I mean, sometimes we'll go with a monster, old monster worm. Got gotcha. you. And, and Y'all ever use the big giant ish tube? <laughs> no, I've never used that. <laughs> Looks like this microphone. Lo lots of big gets it's, you know, the real big, yeah. get old yep. big gets it's and stuff. Uh, those are really good. But um, it's, it's funny, you can go, a lot of people think you go down tiny in size. I've, I've found that if you go bigger in size, you get a better reaction. It pisses them off quicker, it more does. or less, it right? It does. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've Texas rigged big swim baits and the big, uh, oh, what's the thing that they, all the boys throw at Tennessee River on the scrounger head? The Castaic. Uh, jerky J. The jerky, big Jerky J. Yeah, jerky Texas J's, rigged the yep. Jerky J and yep. then things like that. And, and really got fish fired up pretty quick. Um, but different lakes, it's funny because you get some times up in the Ozark lakes or around the smallmouth. I mean, you know, the smallmouth, I mean. It really doesn't matter what you throw in there. No, just they just stay jig. mad. Th yeah. Throw a jig. You yeah, don't they need just to do stay nothing mad. but a jig. <laughs> um, that, that smallmouth, one thing I do when I'm fishing for smallmouth on the bed is I want to use the uh, the the number one uh, thing that I feel like I've got in my boat to as far as my landing with the highest landing ratio percentage because mm -hmm. what happens when you hook them four-pound St. Lawrence smallmouth, yeah, they take you for a ride. Yeah. Um, so putting to me, putting a number one drop shot hook right there in their lip is the hardest thing for them to get rid of. Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, even small shaky heads, but I've always felt like, um, and, and you can catch them on, I mean, just pick your poison when it comes to a smallmouth yeah. just about. Yeah. But I always feel like I don't want to give a smallmouth especially any leverage whatsoever, whether it's a jig head, a jig, a Texas rig. I want to give him no leverage. Right. So if I put in – and actually, I've caught more on just little weightless worms with a number one hook in them than I have anything. And and when they get that number one in their lip, uh, without any drop shot weight or any weight attached to it, they it's they can't shake that yeah, thing. I mean, they can't get rid of it, you know. So – um, that's the only thing that I change when I'm fishing for smallmouth. But back to what y'all were yeah. saying, I mean, it, I mean, you can you can piss a big largemouth off with the, the biggest bait in your boat sometimes. Yeah. I mean, you can you can even break out some of them tater hog two foot tater glide baits and, yeah. and be careful with them big old treble hooks because you'll hook one in the outside of the head <laughs> oh, yeah. and then you'll be like, oh well, got to turn that one loose. Lost so. the cancer tournament one year because of that. Oh no, <laughs> I oh, did. no. You mean cause a tater hog? Cause we can blame it on tater hogs. Well, it was tater hogs' fault. <laughs> okay. I was using a big glide bait and it hit it on the outside. Mm. And it, it just, did, did the fish swat at it or just snagged him? Uh, he swatted at it. He just come up got, and, and rolled it. it. He just got it on the outside yeah. of his head. Yeah. I was doing it to fire him up. I wasn't doing it to catch him. <laughs> Ryan Shario said, do you try a jig first to see if it makes him mad and, and bite in the first couple ga casts? I, so I want, I want to roll that question over and elaborate on it a little bit because I have seen, and Lake Hartwell has been, which Cobb won our event last year at Hartwell on a, I think he was on a shaky head if I'm not mistaken. Most of his bed fish were, were caught on a shaky head. But um, a lot of the, I have used the jig in a lot of situations, and Hartwell's one of the lakes that, that shines to me to where um, just a regular half-ounce dock jig uh, 
gets those fish fired up super fast in just about anything. I've used just a half ounce jig a lot of times as opposed to, um, you know, big soft plastic. And then I'll have a follow up bait, whether it's a crawler, shaky head, or something like mm -hmm. that. Right. But I have I have used that a lot, just a regular half ounce jig to uh, to get them fired up. You got to be careful with 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 the half ounce jig and swinging on them a bunch and getting too aggressive because you will yeah. end up breaking your for, breaking your for, own heart. For the smallmouth, a hundred percent, I use a jig. Now, you do, re do you use a compact jig for the smallmouth fishing? I, I use, use a, a, a 3 8 ounce jig, and I cut the skirt right behind the hook. Okay. The reason I do that is because I can boat flip that smallmouth. Gotcha. And I use, I use like a 12-pound or a 14-pound test line. As long as you haven't got one over 5 pounds, you can pretty much get him coming, and he'll jump, and he'll jump right in the boat. Right. So I don't have to worry about fighting him. And right, playing him and yeah, spending all that so much time. I mean, I, I I love boat flipping fish more than anything. I one thing we have to watch when we're when we're bed fishing, especially with smallmouth, um, when we flip them in the boat with our cameraman or whatever it may be, or we're having to run cameras this year. If you saw that, yeah, the new yeah. rule, got the GoPro, um, and we'll talk about that on another show. But um, is is you know we got to show it to the camera. You know we got to make sure that so if if you if you go to swinging one in and he comes flying off, and I mean if you know for a fact he was hooked inside the mouth, you're golden, right? Right. Yeah. Um, but if you don't. And you're yeah. not able to show it to somebody, That's then, right. you know, there's always questions. But, That's uh, right. But that being said, I'm like you. If I can power fish one in the boat, I, won't, yeah, I'd I like would rather power do that fish every day of the week. Definitely. Every day of the week. Um, all right, Derek Westfall said, aside from KJ, who will be the first 2021, quote, he put, quote, rookie, but there is a, a specific rookie class, guys. Guys, I, I think everybody understands that Christie and Hackney, a couple of those guys, qualified do not qualify as rookies. Um, right. It's I think it's based on career earnings or something like that. Yeah. So, um, who will be the first 2021 rookie, true rookie, to win an Elite Series tournament? Aside from yourself, of course. That's what Derek asked. Well, that's a good one. So uh, in that rookie class, who do you think? Oh, man, there's a couple of them that's going to be stout. Um, Give us one. I'm gonna say I'm gonna go with Brian. Brian New, I think he's gonna with do good. Newbie. I right. think old Newby's gonna do good this year, and uh, you know I think um, I think he's gonna do stout. He's got a lot of experience around the country, a lot of these different places, and and I think it's gonna definitely help help pay out for him. But uh, that's who I'm going with. Um, so I know a couple. Let's see. I'm trying to think of the true rookie class because I saw everybody's picture the other day. Um, Daryl Gleason comes to mind. Yeah, Daryl, he's tough. He's, he's been around in, a long time. He's put in time. his time for yes, sure. Yes, Very good fisherman. Mm -hmm. uh, Matthew Robertson. Yeah, that's, that's who my second choice would be if it's okay. Matt Robertson. So, 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 so on him. Yep. On him. Yep. Um, yeah, Matthew's going to be fun to watch. I mean, I'm ex I'm really excited about the rookie class coming in because it's it's going to be uh, – man, it's going to be an awesome year. we got a, we got a killer schedule, um, a lot of really, really good fishermen. Uh, a lot of New says he, he likes the way you think. <laughs> <laughs> He's on here. If I knew he was watching, we'd have, I'd, 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 <laughs> we'd have I'd to delete that. Leg or stick you in the shin or something. But, um, no, uh, yeah, Gleason knew, obviously, a very strong rookie class Definitely. coming into the leads this year. Uh, yep. Matt, Matt Robertson, I mean, that guy, he'll, he'll just be fun to watch regardless. Uh, I mean, he's, he's, he's just – He's yeah. a smart fisherman. Yeah, he, he, he does a lot very, of things. You, you look at him, you think, that guy don't know what he's doing. That boy knows <laughs> what he's doing. Yeah. He looks like some hippie from the – the 60s or something, yeah, but that yeah. boy can flat put them in the boat. Absolutely. I just hope he wears that leopard print jacket to blast off. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and, uh, and he'll still dump water on himself, even in Knoxville when it might be 23 degrees and snowing <laughs> or something. Uh, but anyway, all right, so let's continue with the questions. I don't know. What time are we getting up on, Jeff? 7.55. 7.55. we got about five minutes, y'all. And then we got our trivia giveaway. Uh, we got a good trivia question waiting for y'all, too. Um, all right. Let me scroll back through here. If y'all see a question you want to jump in on, y'all let us know. Uh, good old green pumpkin skipping jig will fire a Hartwell, Hartwell largemouth up quick. That's right, Andrew. Um, let's see. I'm going to get back. I want to try to jump on a couple more questions. It's been a great show. Uh, favorite technique. This is just a general question. Bryant Clary, who's one of our uh, regular viewers. Bryant's on about every single uh, week that we have a show. Um, give us y'all's favorite. We hadn't talked. We talked a lot about the spawn, obviously, because we well, got – Three guys right here that I would sight fish twelve months out of the year if it was possible. I would too. No, <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I'll do it with. I don't even care if they're on the bed. I want them cruising. Yeah. Then I want them you on the beds. Yeah, then I want to catch them cruising. Then I want to catch them on the brim beds. And then I want to catch them cruising again. Yeah, so. that's yeah. You're, you're, yeah, I'm right there with you. I want to see him when I catch him. 
I know I'm excited. I know some of the guys like the spread out schedule last year, which I'm a big deer hunter, so I'm not complaining when we're wrapping up in July, you know. So, yeah. um, but that being said, I, I, you know, I think we're going to have several opportunities to, to, to peek at them this year, you know, and I think it's yeah. going to be a fun year. Definitely. Um, Lake Fork is one of the first ones that comes to mind. Say, that's what I was saying. That's Fork gonna be, is going to yeah. be. Yeah, I mean, there'll be some, some, some giants. And I mean, and when I say giants, I'm talking about that. I'm a venture outsider. There might be a 12 or 13 call yeah. in that tournament just because we might be hitting I it. think you could see a 40-pound bag yeah. any yep. day up there. Yep, for sure. Um, all right, so uh, your favorite technique this time of year, back to Bryant's question, when the water is below 55 degrees, which is about what you're dealing with probably all over, other, minus right around the hot holes at Norman, that's probably 50-ish, upper yeah. 40s maybe in the river. What, what is it at Norman right now? It's right at 50s, about like 50, 50, 48, yeah. yeah. Well, let's specifically talk about Norman because I'm going there Tuesday to break my boat in, so y'all go ahead and give me some insider <laughs> tips. No, in, in all honesty, just favorite favorite techniques this time of year, below 55. Uh, KJ, you start, and then yeah, if you can't copy him because y'all no, been doing that a lot tonight, y'all got to do two different things. My, my favorite would probably be taking a crankbait this time of year, something that's around like a – uh, eight to twelve foot diving, me, uh, medium sized little crankbait. And, okay. You know, I like the Jinko CD7. That thing is bad to the bone for. And a we little. just happen to be given one of those. Yeah, we, are. we are. And and you know, it has that tight little bitty wobble. And what's unique about that CD7? Its bill is designed where it's actually at an angle more down. And whenever you throw that crankbait up there right near the rocks, and as soon as you start cranking on that crankbait, it instantly dives straight to the rocks. And what's nice about that is. You know, nine times out of ten, your bite on a crankbait is going to come off the reaction as soon as it bounces off that rock. Well, so that bill is angled straight down. It's instantly going down, starts grinding the rocks, and you get a longer strike zone. And, you know, this time of year, that's what I'm going to be doing. I like doing a lot of cranking and, and running around fishing chunk rock or, or clay or sand of that nature. Okay. All right. Uh, over to you, Jeff. And that would have been uh, – cranking would probably have been one of my go-tos. But there's a lot of ways to catch one right now. Yeah, there's a you, – you can do a whole lot of different things right now. I – I prefer a jig. If I'm going to go out right now, it's going to be I'm going to pick up a, a small jig. I'm going to cut the profile way down, mm -hmm. um, and then I'm just going to fish it. You know, I actually fish it a lot faster than most people probably would. But um, you know, I'm going to throw it out, let it go to the bottom, hop it once, and if I don't get him, I'm going back in. Most time, they're going to hit it on the fall, and I, I I prefer to use a little bit heavier chunk maybe this time of year than I would, so I get a little bit slower fall. Okay. And so that's that's going to be my go-to right now. Okay. All right. Well, that's two solid techniques for this time of year, absolutely. Um, one more question, then we're going to have to jump into our trivia question because, unfortunately, we're running out of time. Uh, this is a really good question. This goes back to uh, another bed fishing question, but it's a great question, and, and we've all encountered this situation. What adjustments do you guys make when you find fish on the bed in practice and the water muddies right before the tournament? What tricks do you pull out? Mm -hmm. That's a that's a hard one, but one of the tricks that I would say that I use the most is getting to know where that fish is. If you know, so say you know it's going to be a coming a flood, and, and, you, it's, and you do that by lining something up on the bank, making a mark on the bank. Correct, okay. correct. Not necessarily making a waypoint on your graph, but necessarily saying, all right, well this this birdhouse and this tree it lines up perfect and it goes down it points exactly where it's at and i know in my notes you know i always keep a, a, a booklet with me when i'm on the water bed fishing and i write down exactly everything i know about where that fish is how it's lined up where it's setting up at this must if, be the engineer genes in you <laughs> yeah it must be and uh you know i i'll go in and i'll, I'll look at that list and and i'll memorize exactly where that fish is set up at and then i'll go back to that fish it's you know and not necessarily sight fishing. You don't have to necessarily see that fish. As long as you know where that fish is at, you can generally catch that fish a lot of times without having to look at him. And sometimes even easier when the water dirties up like that. Correct. When we, they can't see you, the ball's in your court most of the time. You correct. just got to make that right cast. We've probably won just in the last 10 years at least 30 night tournaments uh, bed fishing. Catching bed fish at night. At, at night. night. All right, y'all hear that. So yeah. we talked about making a mark on the bank. Have you ever used a stick and stuck it in the bed? Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. Most definitely. You didn't mention that. I'm just throwing <laughs> no. that out there. Have you ever painted rocks like and just thrown them right, rocks. right on the you, edge of the bank? You can take golf balls. Yeah. Uh, I've thrown okay. golf balls. Yeah. Have you ever moved anybody else's? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is a good question. I haven't done that. No, I haven't either. 
I mean, I've caught other people's, but I haven't yeah, caught yeah, other people's. You know, <laughs> when you find that guy that's running those little yellow ribbons, you yeah, just like, it's, okay, where's the yellow ribbon? Okay, there's one, there's one, that one. He helps you out, you know, you just run his same fish. Yeah, that's uh, um, yeah, there's all kinds of little tricks and, and tips to mark those beds. But So the night, the night beds, are y'all just, are y'all actually marking them uh, with things yourselves, or are you just lining up on the banks with them? Lining up on the, banks, on the banks. Just, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, cool. All right, so that brings us to trivia question time. I know we've hit about an hour. Let me FaceTime Fat Cat real quick so we can get, no. get the winner. <laughs> we love you, Fat Cat, but last week's so so I don't funny. know if y'all saw the show last week, but last week, Fat Cat, basically we got to the end and we said, all right, we're going to put Fat Cat in charge of the trivia winner tonight. That's hilarious. And the, the, the way we do it, because everybody's feed is different the way things come through. Right. And, and they come through so fast. So they it, come through so fast. It, it's confusing. <laughs> Yeah, right. and, and we said, the first person you see that gets it right on your feed, Fat Cat, um, let us know, and that's that's the winner, officially official winner. And what happened, Jeff? Well, the problem was it, <laughs> it was, uh, there was like a typo. It was the right answer, but it was a typo on the first one, I believe is what he said. So Maybe, he didn't, he didn't but, count that. So, yeah. But then we went back and he counted. Like, he was like he ignoring certain ones. But it was funny. Jeez. I was wondering if he was waiting for like a friend of his that he might have been texting an answer to. to <laughs> really? text him. Like, but anyway, it was like, oh answer. no, well, Matt Newman's in. No, no, uh, uh, Luke Miller or, or James Bryan or what? I'm sorry. I'm just calling out names that I'm but seeing we, feed right now. We ended up, <laughs> I ended up matching the gift pack and we did, I think that's maybe the first Dude. time. Two I think it was the giveaways. first time we did two giveaways. <laughs> yeah, so two four hundred dollars. Four hundred dollars giveaways. Gregory sponsors. Uh, Drew's a big kayak angler. A bunch of his sponsors pitched in uh, a big giveaway pack that was like over four hundred dollars and stuff. And because Fat Cat called out like sixteen names, we we ended up <laughs> cutting it down. We gave the first and second guy that he called out um, both over four hundred. Oh, Jeff. Dug up a bunch of goodies from the lunker. Tanks. I don't know if it's four hundred dollars, but it's the biggest box I could find, and I couldn't fit anything <laughs> else in it. He, he dug up a bunch of stuff That's actually cool. from from inside the lunker Tech's warehouse, right? Yes, from here. So I know that was some some good stuff. Yeah, it was good. Um, all right, trivia question time again. Uh, Jeff's in charge tonight. No offense to y'all, we just don't want any like one time. That's what happened. But um, Jeff is in charge of the winner tonight. He will announce the winner. He'll let me know, and I'll announce the winner. Um, just the winner needs to send us a message on our Facebook page. Uh, give us your shipping information, and this gift pack, compliments of a couple of KJ's fine sponsors, uh, will be sent directly to your doorstep. All right, y'all ready? You ready, Jeff? Yes. Okay. All right, Jeff's ready. Um, how many times did KJ qualify for the FLW and Bass College National Championship? Uh, and this is a record, correct? Correct. This is an all-time record. How many times did K? I I probably just I, – I let him know way too much information right there. I shouldn't have said that until afterwards. Doesn't matter. All right. How many times did KJ qualify for the FLW and Bass – College National Championship. We talked about the Boat U.S. Uh, college Championship, but y'all told me something I didn't know, that everybody qualifies for it. You just sign up and go, basically. Yeah. So the FLW. I have a winner. You already have a winner. Yep. Who is that winner? Now, if it's family, it doesn't count. I'll go ahead and say, if it's I have family, no idea it doesn't who count. that is. So is it the same one I'm seeing? Uh, mine's Mark Lale. Okay, the same one I got. the first one on mine. So Mark Lale, is he related to y'all? Or Not that I know. Okay, all right, cool. All right, so Mark Lell is the winner of tonight's giveaway. Uh, the answer is 10, uh, and that is and, – and it was. It, I'm surprised it happened so quick because I'm getting a lot of four, 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 well, there four. Was, there were some fives, too. There were some fives, uh, too. Yeah. Uh, but 10 times he qualified for the FLW and BASS College National Championship. Uh, and five times I asked, I asked KJ, I got to crack on you for a second because I was the same way. I said, well, how do you how do, you do it five <laughs> times if you're only in college for four years? And <laughs> yeah. he said, well, I went, I, it took a me lot five of years studying. To, yeah, yeah, a lot, lot of studying. A lot of it fish took, studying. It took me five years to get my, I was in a, I was on a five year plan too. Hey, so, it's called strategy. It's That's called right. strategy. It's called but, fishing Kentucky Lake. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, well, you were working on your scholarship. Exactly. I was right? building dual, up, dual getting major. ready for the opens. That's dual right. major, yeah. That's right. All right. Well, KJ and Jeff, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for joining us tonight. I appreciate Thanks it. For, yeah, and, and looking forward to competing against you and, and following what you're doing this year on the Elite Series. Um, it's going to be a fun year. Got a great schedule. And, uh, and you're obviously off to a great start. So thanks again for the giveaway. Congrats to what, Mark Lale? Was that it, Jeff? Correct. Mark so. Lale, 
send us a message with your shipping information. We'll get this out to you ASAP. And, guys, we appreciate everybody tuning in. When we can't go fishing, we're going to sit right here and do what, Jeff? We're going to talk fish. We're going to talk fish. Talk fish. We'll see you all soon. Thank you for listening to Let's Talk Fish. Visit our private Facebook group to continue the conversation, post your questions, and talk with other fellow anglers at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Let's Talk Fish. Follow us on Instagram at Let's Talk Fish Official and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more exclusive content. Join us again next episode for more actionable tips, tactics, and techniques directly from the pros. And remember, when we can't go fishing, we're going to sit right here and talk fish.